Revolution. 26 years ago, Paul McCartney, along with John Lennon, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr, performed on stage at Pittsburgh Civic Arena, attracting thousands of screaming teenagers as the Beatles. Tonight, the former Beatle takes center stage as he brings his $26 million tour to Pittsburgh. The band members may be new, but obviously the cute Beatle still has the talent to draw thousands. His show is sold out. Dave Clark is at the Civic Arena to give us a look at the excitement surrounding tonight's Paul McCartney concert. Dave. Well, Vicki, I'm surrounded by thousands of people to my right, to my left. I think about 14,000 people are expected here tonight. We just heard from promoter Ed Travisari. There are still about 400 tickets left for tonight's show, so there's still a chance you can get in here. Now, the show starts in about 90 minutes from now. The fans are definitely ready for the show. It's a big show. By the way, it costs $26 million to produce the show that will be performed here tonight. It's a big night for Beatle fans, young and old. They want to see Paul McCartney. All my life. Paul McCartney has been a beloved music legend for over two decades. Female fans especially loved him. Many of them said he was the cutest of the Beatles. McCarthy may be a lot older now, but he still has a magical effect on his fans, especially those who waited outside the Civic Arena early today. Well, I've been a Beatles fan all my life, ever since I was 11 years old, and this is like the culmination of everything that I am today. <laughs> well, I love the guy. I grew up with him, you know, uh, since I was this high. <laughs> it's great. Well, I almost went to New York to see him. Uh, it's fantastic, you know, especially two days. I'm going both nights. You know. I remember watching the Beatles back in 64 on, this, on the Sullivan shows at my grandmother's house. And ever since, I've been a big fan of... Right now, backstage here at the Civic Arena, the stage crew is getting everything set. And then, Paul McCartney fans will have their dreams come true. I, I've always liked his music, and um, I think that seeing him alone is is important. Maybe the only Beatle I ever get to see. <laughs> As you can see, you've got all kinds of fans here. An interesting mix of people. A lot of people in their 30s, 40s, even 50s. And earlier today, we collected some Paul McCartney facts, one of which is the fact that Paul takes about an hour every day to warm up, if musically, that is. Uh, all of Everybody on the tour is a vegetarian, and the scalpers are selling tickets from $600 to $1,800 for tonight's show. So we hope if you're coming down, you enjoy it, there's still tickets available. Back to you, Vicki. Okay, thanks, Dave. Ron. Well, back in the USSR today, there were some surprises. 200,000 Soviets marched through the streets of Moscow chanting, Remember Romania. Average low on the fourth day of February, 35, our average high. Records are 68 set in 1890, and then 95 years later, seven below was our record low. Last year was very February and winter-like, 23 and 12. Today, we ended up with nearly eight-tenths of an inch of rain. Started out the morning at 2 a.m. with 46 degrees, our high for the day. Our current 28 is the coldest reading so far, with a very strong northwest wind right now at 14, gusting up to 23. The wind chill is making it feel like 8 degrees outside. Relative humidity, 78%. If you have a home barometer, might be a good time to set it. It's on the rise, and 30 inches of mercury even. PSI is in the good range at 49, with fine particulate matter in the air. And the regional temperatures show the warm spots to be just a degree above freezing. This is ABC. The night thousands of Pittsburgh fans have been waiting for is over as Paul McCartney dazzles the crowd for night number one. We'll have a live report. In Moscow, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev gets a big boost as 200,000 take to the streets. And the pro football season comes to a close in Hawaii. Good evening, I'm Tom Wendell. And I'm Sheila Hyland. WTAE 4 News is next. You're watching WTAE TV in Pittsburgh. Honored as the best newscast in Pennsylvania, this is WTAE 4 News. Thanks for joining us. It's been 26 years since ex-Beatle Paul McCartney dazzled Pittsburgh fans. And tonight, more than 14,000 packed the Civic Arena to hear the sounds of the past 
and present. The 47-year-old bass guitarist is making Pittsburgh his only stop in Pennsylvania on his current tour. Tonight was night number one of a two-night performance in the city. Let's go now to the Civic Arena where Avon Zanos is standing by live with more on tonight's events. Avon. Well, Tom, for the first time in 26 years, Paul McCartney played Pittsburgh, and for over 14,000 fans tonight, it was a night to remember. Now, the show began with a 14-minute film of the Beatles and of us of yesterday. They took us from 1964, when Paul McCartney and the Beatles played here in Pittsburgh, a younger Lynn Keener was waiting in line to see them. Today, she waited in line with her son. I seen him when I was 11. He's going to see him when he's 11. <laughs> It's a show. It's a show. It's a show that has been called the concert of the year, playing to rave reviews in packed arenas around the world. I wanted to see what I consider a living legend. I mean, Paul McCartney was very much a part of my early life and very much a part of me, really. I'm and these 19-year-olds say they are longtime fans as well. I guess we can remember back. I uh, started in second grade with the cartoons. The Beatles cartoons. <laughs> Although he is no longer surrounded by the Beatles of old, fans here say the sounds of Paul McCartney yesterday and today will long be remembered. I think he'll, the, his music will be enjoyed even in the next generation. He's a classic. <laughs> About half the songs uh, tonight were vintage Beatle and about half were Paul McCartney. And, uh, you know, I think talking to fans here, it was clear that most of them came out because of the vintage Beatle, but it was Paul McCartney, the new Paul McCartney, that was being promoted tonight. The only song we were allowed to tape was uh, Figure of Aid, and uh, also all the T-shirts were of Paul alone. But whatever the strategy, it seems to be working, because I talked to lots of people as they were leaving and folks here, and they were telling us that, uh, you know, even if they did come in for the old vintage Beatles, it was a new Paul McCartney. They left with a new sense of respect for him. Is that right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a night to remember here in Pittsburgh, and quite a few say they're coming back tomorrow night for a repeat performance. Reporting live from the Civic Arena, I'm Yvonne Zanus. Now back to you, Sheila. Yeah. Thanks, Yvonne. Looks like a lot of fun out there. And still to come on WTAE for news, will the real Paul McCartney please stand? <laughs> And finally tonight, will the real Paul McCartney please stand up? When the name Paul McCartney pops up, many of you probably conjure up images of a man on stage singing and playing bass guitar for the Fab Four. Now meet Paul McCartney, the woman. That's right, Paul McCartney lives in Highland Park, and about the only thing she has in common with the ex-Beatle is her unusual name. I would get phone calls from kids asking me when my next album was going to be released or whatever, kiddingly. When is your next album going to be released? It's not, because I don't sing very well at all. Paul McCartney is actually Paula McCartney. Her husband gave her the nickname and it apparently stuck. By the way, Paula McCartney owns no Beatles records and I imagine we probably didn't see her anywhere. No, I don't think she went tonight. to the concert. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> that wraps up this weekend edition of WTAE for news. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next weekend. Until then, have a good week and good night. WTAE 4 News is brought to you in part by Today's Home, serving Pittsburgh's interior design needs for over 40 years.
closed caption newscast has been a presentation of WTAE 4 News. <laughs> Live from Television Hill, this is Channel 11 News Nightbeat with Bill Martin, Cynthia Fodor, Kevin Benson with the weather outside, and Derek Gunn with sports. Now, Channel 11 News Nightbeat. Well, the Civic Arena rocks tonight to the sounds of Paul McCartney. By the way, it was 26 years ago the ex beatle last played Pittsburgh. Hello, everyone. I'm Bill Martin. And I'm Cynthia Fodor. Our top story tonight, a sold-out crowd jams the arena to hear rock and roll legend Paul McCartney. The fans weren't disappointed. They heard a nice mix of nostalgic Beatles tunes as well as McCartney's newer material. Our Keith James is at the arena with more on this night of music. Keith? Bill, Cynthia, it was indeed a mix of McCartney music, but it was the McCartney memories and most specifically the Beatle memories that made this crowd get a big, big thrill. I have a couple of the fans with me here. As you can see, your name is? Renee Soroka. Where are you from, Renee? Brighton Heights. Okay, and your thoughts on the concert? It was fantastic. The laser and light show was unbelievable. Your favorite song? My favorite song? Probably Living Like That. Uh, and how long have you been a McCartney fan? Oh, long time. <laughs> <laughs> Longer than we care to go yeah. into. Thank you, Renee. Uh, uh, Mr. McCartney, of course, was on hand with his lovely wife, Linda, who he uh, introduced as Gertrude Higginbottom, I believe. Don't ask me why. Part of the show. One guy who who might know why is Glenn Peters. Glenn, um, you have fo followed McCartney uh, literally uh, from uh, coast to coast. Why? Well, it's uh, pure McCartney magic. He's simply the best. And uh, any idea why he calls Linda Gertrude Higginbottom? <laughs> well, basically it's because of her love for animals. <laughs> okay. Your thoughts on the show, because you've seen a lot. You've been in Chicago and you're going to Cincinnati. Your, your thoughts on this show tonight? Simply great. It's another example of pure McCartney magic. All right. McCartney magic. And it was a magical night for Pittsburgh as well. And there's nothing else I can say except I saw him in 76. And this even topped that extravaganza. Bill, you, Cynthia, you. back to you. People having a lot of fun. All right, thank you, Keith. Thanks. Paul McCartney last passed through Pittsburgh 26 years ago with the Beatles. The Fab Four sold out the Civic Arena, and back then, it cost a lot less to see your favorite rock star. Tickets for the 1964 Beatles concert cost $5.90. 13,000 fans turned out for the 35-minute show. It costs a little more for a ticket now. For this tour, they were going for about $28.50, but that didn't stop the fans. 28,000 seats sold out for the two-day event. McCartney says he picked Pittsburgh over several other cities like Cleveland and Philly. He says because our town reminds him of his own hometown, Liverpool, England. That's a nice note, isn't it? Well, one of the guitars used tonight by Paul McCartney has a Pittsburgh connection. It was owned by Carl Grempenstead of Pittsburgh Guitars on the south side and it found its way into Paul's hands by a famous third party. We deal in vintage and cool guitars, and this certainly is, is one of each. So um, we heard that the guitar was for sale and we bought it, and eventually we sold it to Rick Nielsen in Cheap Trick. He in turn sold it to Paul McCartney. Well, Carl himself says he's a big McCartney fan and managed to get tickets for tonight's concert to be able to see Paul play that guitar firsthand. <laughs> That's nice for this Sunday. Our next news in one half hour on our 24-hour news source. Before we go tonight, we leave you with some more of the Paul McCartney concert. Have a nice night. Good night. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ron Jay.
And I'm Della Cruz. Topping our news this noon, Paul McCartney rocks the Civic Arena. Well, last night the rock and roll legend kept his fans happy with a nice mix of old Beatles tunes and his newer material, too. And Ron, this news may make his fans even happier. There are still a few tickets left for tonight's concert. Our Andy Gassmeyer is at the arena, and he has some more on Paul McCartney for us. Andy? And Ron and Della, a few is not to be underscored. As of 9 o'clock this morning, the Civic Arena box office told us they had roughly 300 tickets uh, for tonight's concert still on sale. But by 11.15, that number had shrunk down to just under 200. And after that, the remainder are on sale here on a first-come, first-served basis. As the box office just opened at 12 noon for those who had not been able to buy their tickets over the phone. One of those who was trying is uh, Ed Angel. Ed, Ed Angel from McKee's Rocks had uh, just gone in, tried to buy a ticket. And what was what kind of success did you have? I chose not to buy them because they're in E3, which is behind the stage, and they're not very good seats. So I went to the show last night and sat in A25, which were real good seats. And well, since you went to the show last night, uh, what would you say of the performance? It was a fantastic performance. He put on a great show. He really did. Um, probably the best concert I've ever seen here. Paul McCartney without the rest of the Beatles is still a show of, of, of his own. Oh, yes, definitely. He's definitely put on a show. He plays a lot of Beatles music in too, which brings you back through time. Okay. And Ron and Della, those sentiments are similar to those expressed by the thousands, roughly 14,000 or so, who attended last night's concert. Paul McCartney's the greatest thing since Ed Sullivan, 1964. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, the Beatles. Yeah. Not long after that, in their first U.S. tour, they came to Pittsburgh, and the rest is history, as they dominated the music scene throughout the 60s until their breakup in 1970. The Paul McCartney who performed here last night and is scheduled to do so again tonight is like many of his fans graying now, but he hasn't lost his ability to sell a song, as some 14,000 fans learned within minutes after he bounded onto the stage. Now, Ron and Della, there was something uh, said by uh, some who had been to that concert last night to the effect that uh, he, that is Paul McCartney, uh, isn't quite the same in terms of uh, there being some hoarseness to his vo uh, voice, some raspiness, but that could be chalked up to the fact that this is just one of many stops on his concert tour, and I can say from having been here, or been uh, there last night, that he was hoarse uh, a little bit from the moment he stepped on stage, but after that, the old Paul McCartney came back, and you could hear that in songs like Yesterday. Today. It was a concert well worth seeing and well worth going to. He might be suffering from the same flu that all of us have been having in this country, all across the country. Plus I'm old age. We're not getting any younger that's here. That's right. Well, that's yeah, true. Did, uh, did he, Andy, uh, did any reporters get a chance to talk to him, to Paul McCartney? Not yet. We're now restricted to talking to him uh, sometime around 4, 4.30 this afternoon during a news conference that is to be held here at the Civic Arena. Okay, that'll be interesting to see his reaction to Pittsburgh, as a matter sure of fact, should. after sure not will. being here for all these years. It was years. a different city from what he uh, saw when he That's was here right. in 1964. That's sure of that, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Okay. Now, tickets for the McCartney concert cost twenty-eight fifty, which is not outrageous for rock concerts these days. Let's take a little nostalgic comparison. When Paul last played Pittsburgh, it was 1964, and he was a member of the Fab Four. Tickets for that concert were a mere $5.90. Almost 13,000 fans turned out for the show, which was only 35 minutes long. By contrast, last night's show is 100 minutes long. That's last night and tonight's show. Paul really wanted to perform in our town. He said he picked Pittsburgh over Philly and Cleveland because he says Pittsburgh reminds him of his hometown of Liverpool, England. Run. Thousands caught McCartney's second act, but apparently McCartney caught something else, perhaps the flu bug. I'm Bonnie Barrett, and coming up, I'll have a live report. The city's new message to street vendors, stay on the move or fines are in your future. I'm Ralph Iannotti, and I'll have that story. John Stackerwald will have the sports. Good evening. I'm Stacey Smith. I'm Ray Tannehill. Bye with this news update is next. Former Beatle Paul McCartney made it through the second night of his concert stop here in Pittsburgh despite a health problem that came to light earlier today. Bonnie Barron is over at the Civic Arena now with the story. Bonnie? 
Ray Paul McCartney was reportedly treated at his hotel room for either the flu or a, or a sore throat, or probably both, if he's got our kind of flu bug. Dr. Joseph Mulvihill of Regent Square was the attending chiropractor who told me earlier today by phone that McCartney was doing super but would not uh, elaborate on any further details. Whatever McCartney is suffering from, he sure didn't share the suffering with his audience. As Paul McCartney's world tour made two stops in Pittsburgh, among the many who caught his act may have been an unwelcome visitor, the flu bug. Through two sold-out energetic performances, a raspy throat nagged McCartney's high notes. But judging by tonight's crowd, slightly rowdier than last night's, the overall show was the historic heart stopper this over 30 crowd had hoped for. What follows may be more good news for these fans. A live album and film from this tour, and possibly a studio album with this band. I think we're the band at the moment. Um, if there's going to be another album done, I'm sure we'll get, you know, we'll be the band he takes in. And, you know, there's a sort of refusal, which will be great. But I don't think we'll get around to it this year. Another, you know, like fresh material. bit younger crowd tonight and a little bit rattier crowd. What do you think? Do you think he sounded sick to you? I thought the concert was great. He did an excellent job. Brought back a lot of memories. He's a legend. What did you think about his voice tonight? I thought it was a little raspy, but still, he's still a legend. Yeah. He's proven himself in the 90s. He's right. going and what do you all think? Yeah. I think despite the raspy crowd, thanks folks, despite the raspy crowd, it sure was a crowd pleaser. I'm Bonnie Barron reporting live from the Civic Arena. Back to you, Ray and Stacy. All right, Bonnie, thank you. Live from Television Hill, this is Channel 11 News Nightbeat with David Johnson, Peggy Finnegan, Dennis Bowman with the weather outside, and John Fedko with sports. Now, Channel 11 News Nightbeat. They say the show must go on, and it did tonight at the Civic Arena. Good evening, I'm Peggy Finnegan. I'm David Johnson. Of course, we're talking about the Paul McCartney concert. For a while this afternoon, some worried the concert might be canceled because the former Beatle apparently has a sore throat, but as Peggy said, the show did go on. Cynthia Fodor is standing by live now at the arena with more. Cynthia. Well, Peggy and David, as you said, a lot of folks were worried today after McCartney canceled his press conference, but most of these fans were not disappointed tonight. They say McCartney was hoarse, his voice was a little strained, and he probably wasn't feeling 100%, but he still tried to give it his all. McCartney fans who couldn't wait for the concert camped outside the Vista Hotel to try to get a glimpse of the superstar. Most were disappointed, but some, like Barry Luber of Philadelphia, got a little too close. He tried to sneak up to McCartney's room. They asked me to leave, and I tried a couple more times, but uh, they're pretty tough up there. They didn't want anybody on the floor at all. But overzealous fans weren't McCartney's only concern today. Most noticed at last night's concert, the former Beatle had trouble hitting the high notes. He dropped a few old favorites, and just James Tamilkoff was disappointed the concert was cut short 15 minutes. Uh, I could tell in the first song when he came out and it was sounded kind of rough and uh, kind of hoarse, but you know how many tours he's been on in different cities and stuff like that, I knew that it would be kind of rough. So this afternoon a doctor showed up at the hotel. A bellman says he brought in vaporizing equipment to treat McCartney. And by the time the rock star arrived at the arena, he indicated he was just fine. Hey, we're doing okay. So the show went on, much to the delight of the 14,000 fans who packed the arena for a second night in a row. Pretty good. He was well, not good last night, but he was, you could tell that he had a sore throat, but he was still good. He was straining during some of those really high notes, but, but he came out really well. It was, uh, it was a job well done, I thought. A, a prolific job by a great songwriter. So after two nights of rock and roll here at the Civic Arena, Paul McCartney can now give his voice a rest. And most of the folks here say they hope they won't have to wait another 26 years before they see him back here in the Berg again. David and Peggy? All right, that is a long time to wait. Cynthia, live at the Civic Arena. Thank you very much. Thanks.
The Paul McCartney concert has certainly been music to the ears of record stores. Sales of Beatles cassettes and compact discs have been brisk since the tour hit town. This national record mart downtown says sales of Beatle music is up about 25%. McCartney's new album, Flowers in the Dirt, is going fast. And to give fans a break, here at the Oasis Record Shop, there's a $2 discount on all Beatles and McCartney music all this week. A scratchy throat didn't stop Paul McCartney, and it didn't bother his fans at the Civic Arena last night either. The show went on despite the former Beatles' flu-like symptoms. He has blown town, however. McCartney is now on his way to Massachusetts, where he'll get a chance to rest his voice and recover before performing again. For as more than 14,000 Paul McCartney fans will enjoy the moment they've been waiting for. I gotta know. The 47-year-old ex-Beatle last played at the Civic Arena in 1964 with the legendary rock band. McCartney will play here for two nights, making this his only stop in Pennsylvania on his current tour. Joining us now live from the Civic Arena are Yvonne Zanos and Vince Gerasoli with more on this McCartney mania. Yvonne, Vince? Well, Sheila, you know, it's been called the concert of the year, and it's been playing to rave reviews and packed arenas in this country since it opened about three months ago, and tonight will obviously be no exception. Folks are lining up here an hour before the doors open and two hours before the concert begins. The concert was, of course, sold out the very day that the tickets went on sale here in Pittsburgh, not only for tonight's performance, but for tomorrow's. And, of course, that comes as no real surprise, considering that the appeal of Paul McCartney and the Beatles spans the generation, and I understand that uh, Vince Gerasol Sully here got a taste of Beatles or Paul McCartney mania this afternoon, or both. That's right, both, because when you do think of Paul McCartney, you obviously think of the Beatles and of all those screaming fans that were always trying to reach out and get a touch of one of them. Well, today, we had a chance to reach out and touch Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney hasn't played lead guitar on tour since his Beatle days, and in just a few hours, about 14,000 Pittsburghers will be able to catch him in the act once again. And on this day of the big concert, Paul McCartney took time out to meet with us. Pittsburgh, meet Paul McCartney. McCartney showed us through the family's Highland Park home and paused a moment to reflect on the impact of such a famous name. I would get phone calls from kids asking me when my next album was going to be released or whatever, kiddingly. When is your next album going to be released? It's not, because I don't sing very well at all. <laughs> of course, we wanted to know what Paul McCartney's personal album collection was really like. McCartney graciously obliged. And what would you like to hear? We have... Well, have some Beatles records. I don't have any Beatles records. I'm sorry. We also had a chance to talk one-on-one -on -one about McCartney's favorite Beatles hit. I don't know. I really... I like Hey Jude. All right. This is really Paula McCartney. Her husband, Tom, gave her the nickname Paul, and it kind of stuck. She, however, doesn't call him Linda. The marriage, according to Paula, was worth losing a maiden name like Masiosi. It's fun. It's fun. People remember my name. Now, Paula told us she won't be at tonight's concert, but she said if Paul McCartney does have time, she'd like to have him and some of his friends over for dinner. I wonder if he's listening, Yvonne. <laughs> I don't know. I want to introduce you to a couple of fans. I was telling you that people got here a full hour before the, the doors opened. You were here an hour and a half before on this cold, cold night. Why so early? Well, we just wanted to make sure that we beat a lot of the traffic in, but uh, there was a couple from Ohio behind us in line, and they've been here since 1 o'clock this afternoon. Now, you two both grew up in in uh, Pittsburgh, but I understand neither one of you made the first concert back in 64. Uh, no, I tried, but they turned me away because I was too young. <laughs> what about you? Why weren't you here the about first the time? the same. Did your parents let you come? No, they wouldn't let me come. <laughs> so this time you have a chance to uh, join in on the excitement. What are you, a, a Beatles fan or a McCartney on his own or both? A little bit of both. Yeah, big night for you? Right. Well, tonight and I'll be here again tomorrow with a buddy of mine. 
Well, that's great. Obviously, not only is uh, Pittsburgh looking forward to Paul McCartney, we understand that Paul McCartney is looking forward to Pittsburgh. He did ask to come and play here. He says it reminds him of his hometown of Liverpool, England, and uh, he says it's fil filled with people, of, um, with ordinary people, with family values and working, working class ethics. It's also obviously uh, filled with people real excited about the concert tonight. We'll keep you posted on that later in the show. With uh, Vince Gerasoli, I'm Yvonne Zanus reporting live from the Civic Arena. All right, thanks, Yvonne. o'clock. Everybody's getting here early. Some say they don't want to miss a second. Others heard that an additional 350 tickets went on sale this afternoon. The concert starts at 8 tonight. It starts again at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And uh, we understand there is no opening act, so this is pure Paul McCartney. About half of the 29 songs he'll be performing are vintage Beatle, about half new Paul McCartney. So there's lots for old and new fans to enjoy. And of course, we'll tell you all about the excitement tonight at 11. Sheila? And then talking about the Beatles. Hello, everyone. I'm Cynthia Fodor. And I'm Bill Martin. The Beatles played the Civic Arena in 1964, about 26 years ago. But a lot has changed since then, and a now 47-year-old Paul McCartney is back. It's McCartney's first major tour since 1976. Our Keith James is at the Civic Arena now, where the band is warming up for one of two sold-out shows. Keith, what's C happening there? Cynthia, I just wish some of the warm-up inside would come outside. It is brisk outside here. Nonetheless, McCartney maniacs have been on hand since mid-afternoon, waiting for that slightest glimpse of their musical hero. And they got that glimpse about 40 minutes ago, when McCartney and his entourage arrived in a long, white stretch limousine from their downtown hotel. They are inside the arena right now, and they are continuing with their sound check. It should be done momentarily, and as you may be able to see behind me, these McCartney fans are waiting for a glimpse of Paul on his way out, and has as has been his habit on this tour, uh, he will roll down the window and wave to all of the fans and they'll all scream, I got a glimpse of his hand. But we had a glimpse of a lot more than just Paul's hand. We had a glimpse of what he's meant to so many people, in particular the McCartney maniacs who didn't bother to brave the weather but had the, uh, a particular party to celebrate as they got ready for the big shows tonight or tomorrow. This party that we see occurred on the north side. There were many like it throughout the Pittsburgh area. Fans celebrating the fact that this McCartney tour is bringing back memories from when they were kids. Memories of when the Beatles toured and arrived here in Pittsburgh. Memories of McCartney's last tour in 76. And, of course, memories of shows that some of them said to me they've already seen when uh, Paul was in Chicago, for instance, and made some of his other stops. But, of course, he's here in Pittsburgh. He has the show sold out tonight starting at 8. And, of course, the show tomorrow night as well. And we will be here live at 11 tonight on Channel 11 to give you a, a review, if you will, of the Paul McCartney concert. Keith, no doubt the scalpers, uh, scalpers will be out tonight. I heard in some cities tickets going for as much as $600. Not the case here in Pittsburgh. Scalpers told me that the best they've been able to get is about $80 or so, Bill, and they expect that price to drop down to maybe $40, $45 just before showtime. Maybe contributing to that is the fact that there's two shows here at the arena tonight and tomorrow, and also the fact that just before, uh, oh, maybe 5 o'clock, they opened the gates here, and there were a handful of tickets, several hundred, that went on sale at the normal price. Hmm. McCartney's okay. back. All right. Thank you. Have fun tonight, Keith. Well, the the site tonight of the return of Paul McCartney to Pittsburgh. Of course, last time in the 60s, he brought three other guys with him. Well, Paul's still rocking, and although he's changed, people are still packing arenas to hear him sing. And if you look around town, you'll see all sorts of Beatle memorabilia, like these Beatle dolls, or this bigger-than-life poster on display at Record Rama Sound Archives in the North Hills. The original owner sold the poster to Paul Winnie, the store owner. This was awarded to her on stage by Chuck Brinkman when the Beatles appeared in Pittsburgh, the one and only time. And families are making an event of the concert. The Crusham family will go tomorrow night. Kyle is 11, and he doesn't only like the McCartney of today. I listen to um, Abbey Road and the White Album, some of the other ones. His 14-year-old brother Todd says, forget the groups of today, just bring on Paul McCartney. I like his, um, just... Most wing, most stuff the Wings did, mm -hmm. and all the Beatles stuff, and I like his newer stuff too, like Flowers in the Dirt. Now they may have been influenced a bit by their dad Mike, the GM of 3WS Radio here in town. He's, in fact, uh, he may be the most excited. Uh, 
there's going to be a press conference. I hope to get to meet Paul McCartney earlier that day. So I'll be so pumped by then, I won't be able to stand it. But they have to wait for tomorrow. These fans were camping out today in hopes of getting a glimpse of McCartney. Lynn Carson screamed as a Beatles fan in the 60s. Do you plan to scream here tonight? I am going to scream. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot of the new music in the next couple of days, but the people in the audience will be asking for a lot of the songs that he performed with this group in the past. Vince Delisi, Channel 11 News. After tomorrow's show, the McCartney tour moves on to Boston. Well, if you were a teenager in the 60s, you may remember the last time Paul McCartney played Pittsburgh. It was 1964, and he was performing with the Beatles. The Fab Four sang to a sold-out crowd at the Civic Arena. That performance was only 35 minutes long. And for an idea of just how much has changed since then, tickets for that 1964 Beatles concert cost a mere $5.90. Almost 13,000 screaming fans attended the show. For the 1990 McCartney show, tickets cost $28.50. But the price didn't stop fans. The arena is sold out, and 28,000 tickets were grabbed up by fans. Now, McCartney's appearance in Pittsburgh is kind of special. He specifically told his agent he wants to play our town because it reminds him of his own working-class hometown of Liverpool, England. Hours, Paul McCartney will bring his music and a lot of nostalgia back to the Civic Arena during his second sellout concert. Jim Scott has been checking into reports that McCartney has a touch of the flu and strained vocal cords. Jim, uh, what's the latest? Well, the latest is, Don, that the show will go on tonight. Uh, flu symptoms and strained vocal cords and all. McCartney will sing, and that was music to the ears of the people who were out here. What a difference a half an hour makes. A little while ago, no one here at the Civic Arena, but now the lines are starting to form. It's been a long time since he performed here 1964 a lot of these people weren't even born the last time he sang here as one of the Beatles are there any tickets left for the show well I can tell you this the scalpers are out here tonight selling tickets to the people who want to come in others are choosing to wait in line they're over at uh, gate number one hoping to uh, cash in on some of those last-minute tickets that may free up you came from Alexandria, Virginia without a ticket, but you got lucky? Yes, sir. I think Paul saved a few to keep the uh, scalpers away. All the radio stations and everywhere and the record outlet, and they, would, they said there was nothing left. That was my husband, so I'm trying again tonight myself without him. He's home. So if I get tickets, I'll have to call him and tell him to come into town. He doesn't know I'm here, though. So he's waiting for me to come home. John Marston of Whitehall. Well, your wife hasn't gotten the tickets yet. She's still up in line hoping to cash in on some. All around us out here, music. Music of Paul uh, McCartney, uh, the Beatles music being played, every radio station in town almost here, and everyone waiting to go inside and have a good night of music. Live in front of the Civic Arena, I'm Jim Scott. Back to you, Don. It is now T-minus about 90 minutes to the sellout show at the Civic Arena. Paul McCartney wraps up the Pittsburgh part of his world tour tonight. Jim Scott is standing by with a concert update. Jim? Don, I, I wish this were yesterday, no pun intended, when it was a little warmer. But they just opened the gates and people have started to flow into the Civic Arena. The crowd is uh, swelling out here. And some more good news. Those folks who were waiting uh, by uh, gate number one to get some tickets were coming out. Everyone was happy. They say, hey, some tickets did free up. They sold them to us. We're in great shape. They're all ready for the concert here tonight. Of course, uh, McCartney supposedly suffering from some symptoms of the flu and uh, some strained vocal cords, but he'll sing. He'll be here live at the Civic Arena. This band is on the run. I'm Jim Scott. Okay, thank you, Jim. That's WTAE 4 News at 6. ABC's World News tonight is coming up next. We'll see you at 11. Have a good evening. This closed captioned newscast has been a presentation of WTAE 4 News. This is CBS. Paul McCartney took over the Civic Arena tonight. I'm out here with his fans. They tell me the show was perfect. I'm Dave Clark. I'll have a live report. Also coming up on Eyewitness News Update, thousands attend an anti-communist rally in Moscow. More trouble in the Middle East as gunmen open fire on a bus filled with Israeli tourists. In sports, there was a great comeback in the final round of the World Caribbean Classic in Key Biscayne, Florida.
Bob Pompiani will tell us about that, and John Lawson will have the weather. Good evening, I'm Vicki yates -Orr. I'm Ron Clank. Eyewitness News Update is next. KDK TV2. This is Eyewitness News Update. Good evening. Pittsburgh was rocking tonight when superstar songwriter and performer Paul McCartney stepped onto stage to start a two-night concert at the Civic Arena. Fans came out in full force to see the ex-Beatle perform here in Pittsburgh as part of a $26 million tour. Our Dave Clark is at the Civic Arena now to give us a look and all the excitement behind tonight's concert. David, what do you have for us? Ron, I'm surrounded by all the fans. Well, some of the fans who were inside <laughs> enjoying the show. It was a fascinating show. Paul McCartney did what everyone expected. He turned on the crowd, and as you'll see by the tape now, everybody enjoyed the show. Yeah! McCartney fans by the thousands lined up outside the Civic Arena. The line stretched down the street. Then everybody packed inside, clamoring for a seat. I was not born in the Beatle era, and I am here because I love the Beatles. Yo, 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 yo. I saw them here 25 years ago, four months, 21 days, and about uh, seven minutes. I was here, I sat up there with my dad. I've been waiting that long to see him back here in Pittsburgh. One of my goals in life was to see a Paul McCartney show, so right. it happened, yeah. And there he was live paul mccartney and his band including his wife backing him up and thousands of fans in front of him screaming for him to sing mccartney came out rocking why can't we travel and continue with life make love or life will come all the time up and down the hills i go lights, the lasers, the band, the stage. This is a $26 million production that includes a 14-minute film before the show starts, tracing the musical climb of Paul McCartney. Tonight, his voice was a little raspy, but he's still Paul McCartney. I was eight years old when they came to Baltimore, Maryland in 64, and I was too young then, and this time I wasn't going to miss it. I think it's fantastic. To be perfectly honest, I prefer George, but I'm not going to say that right now. <laughs> enough, enough! Make it me! Well, Amanda may not like Paul, but hey, Paul can only say, let it be. I'm going to take a quick informal survey. Everybody, how was the show tonight? <laughs> Show. Ron and Vicki, back to you in the studio. <laughs> Dave, you asked the question. We will, of course, have more on this concert later on in this newscast. I guess Vicky. they liked it. <laughs> well, it's time now to go back to the Civic Arena where that Paul McCartney concert just ended moments ago. That's where we find Evening Magazine's Jimmy and Steve. Fellas, what can you tell us? Well, it was a tremendous concert here. Most of the crowd has left. Uh, the, the concert got off to a bit of a slow start tonight, and that's not because he did some solo songs. Uh, yeah, Paul came out, and his first words as he looked soulfully into the crowd's eyes were, People of Detroit, uh, uh, you're not. But it picked up from there. His voice is a bit rough tonight, but not as bad as the other 14,000 people who were singing along on every single Beatles song tonight. Uh -huh. We carried him, actually. Yeah, we did. Uh, I kept my eyes on uh, Linda quite a bit of the night. Her hands actually hover over the keyboard a lot of the time. I don't think they made contact with the keyboard at any time. Actually, Linda McCartney's hand was not plugged in at any time during the show. But it was a, a tremendous show here at the uh, Civic Arena tonight, and uh, Paul said he's going to be coming back, right? Oh, yes. Paul said as his last words, see you next time. We said uh, 26 years since the previous time. We'll see him in 2016. We'll be here. Back to you guys. Any truth to the fact that we understand with 14,000 people singing the Beatles songs, they asked you two to quit singing. You were throwing the crowd off key. <laughs> <laughs> Paul was pointing and looking yeah. kind of nasty. We yeah, were great, point. though. We were just incredible. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that is it for this edition of Eyewitness News. Our next report tomorrow morning at 6.30 on the Wake Up with Larry Richards show. Now stay tuned for Hawaii 5 on. From all of us here at Eyewitness News, good night. I gotta know, I gotta know.
Outside where the folks are already arriving for tonight's sold-out concert. Jim, what's the latest? Oh, yeah, they are, Don. And if he's battling the flu, then Pittsburghers are going to win the battle because the show definitely will go on. It's night number two for Paul McCartney here in Pittsburgh. And it looks like night number two for a sellout crowd at the Civic Arena. There are some people back there uh, by the box office, gate number one, hoping to uh, get some last-minute tickets. Uh, they may be lucky, maybe not. The scalpers are also busy out here selling tickets for as much as $30, $40. But there was a fellow from West Virginia who said he's been up here uh, for both nights, and he says he's had no trouble getting tickets at the last minute, so perhaps some tickets will free up. Of course, the last time McCartney played Pittsburgh, 1964. He was but a lad of 21 years old with a group that was world famous then. John Lennon, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, they made up the Beatles. And even though the group has long since uh, been broken up, McCartney mania is still alive and well in these parts. Ken Rice has a report. It was almost too good to be true. Tickets for Paul McCartney's second Pittsburgh show sold out for weeks, suddenly available this morning. Just a couple hundred squeezed in at the last minute, and fans squeezed into the Civic Arena all morning to snatch them up. The only seats available today are located behind the stage, but no one here seems to care. Anywhere we can get in there as long as we're in the building. I gotta go. This is what awaits them tonight. McCartney and wife Linda performing new material and, of course, many of the old Beatle classics. Yeah, you got that something. I think you'll understand. That was 1964, the year of the Fab Four's first and last trip to Pittsburgh. Diane Vogel was at the Civic Arena back then, and she'll be there tonight, too. I just cried the whole time they were on stage, and Paul was the one that I loved, so I had to come and see this again. We found someone else with memories of 1964, a reporter's reporter who, under mild duress, admits what he asked of the then-fledgling superstars at a pre-concert news conference. I said to either one of them directly or perhaps to the group, well, what are you going to do when the bubble bursts? And Lennon became inflamed, and he said, the bubble burst? What do you think? When is the bubble going to burst? How do you know that? And he just launched into this uh, diatribe against me because I had suggested that this wasn't going to go on forever. Ever since, Lynch has wisely stuck to reporting what's already happened rather than predicting what will. And the Beatles' bubble, a quarter of a century later, still seems in no danger of bursting. I didn't pursue that line of questioning. Ken Rice, WTAE 4 News. Surprisingly, not a lot of people out here just yet. Uh, what uh, is a surprise is a lot of music and radio stations. I'll tell you about that later on at 6 o'clock. Pittsburgh, uh, the next to the last stop on the tour, good thing too. Because uh, as we reported earlier, McCartney uh, suffering some flu-like symptoms. Live in front of the Civic Arena, I'm Jim Scott. Back to you, Don. Our report, Sam, no with the latest on Mario's pain in his back. And Dennis Bowman has a milder turn in his AccuWeather forecast. That's all now on Channel 11 News at 6. This is Channel 11, WPXI-TV, Pittsburgh. Live from Television Hill, this is Channel 11 News. With David Johnson, Peggy Finnegan, Dennis Bowman with the weather outside, and Sam Nover with sports. Now, Channel 11 News. Good evening, I'm Peggy Finnegan. I'm David Johnson. Our top story tonight at 6, McCartney Mania Day 2. Thousands of people heading to the Civic Arena right now to hear the last Pittsburgh concert of a musical legend. This was the scene just moments ago tonight as McCartney and his entourage, Paul McCartney, rolled up to the Civic Arena. McCartney rolling down his window to say hi to his fans. This is the second and last concert of his Pittsburgh leg of his world tour. Tonight's concert was jeopardized by the former Beatles' ill health, but... He will go on with the show. 
Well, Andy Gasmeyer is live at the arena tonight. He has more on the McCartney story. Hi, Andy. Hi, Peggy. For a while today, it appeared that these Paul McCartney fans lined up here in the freezing cold for the start of tonight's 8 o'clock performance might be left out in the cold in more ways than one, as the man they've come to see wasn't feeling all that well. Shortly before noon, as fans lined up to buy the few tickets that were left for tonight's performance, not one spare one anywhere. Word came down that Paul McCartney was having throat problems and had canceled the late afternoon news conference. At times during last night's performance, he appeared to be struggling, as his voice sounded hoarse and raspy, a condition chalked up to the demands of the world tour he began last fall. But later in the day, at the Vista Hotel where McCartney is staying, there surfaced the possibility tonight's performance could be scrubbed as a doctor driving this vehicle with Ohio license plates arrived to make a house call on the Beatles legend. Fans waited for a glimpse of the rock star and made it clear it wasn't too much to expect. I'm sure McCartney understands how the fans feel, but the other side of it is probably a pinch worried also about Looney Tunes on the run, you know. I have an innocent face. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I just want to talk to the musical legend. While they waited, hotel and limousine service employees revealed McCartney had not been feeling well and had vaporizing equipment brought up to his room on the 26th floor. So when the doctor who attended to him for two hours left late this afternoon under tight security arrangements, a hotel guard drove his vehicle to a side door exit, there was real concern the show would not go on. How's the patient? Is he okay? And in case you couldn't make it out, the thumbs up there was given to us by a man described as Dr. Jo Joseph Mullenville. And since he left, both the publicist, McCartney's publicist in New York City, and the promoters of this tour have guaranteed us that, in fact, the show will go on with Paul McCartney starring. David and Peggy, back to you. Andy, very quickly, he went about two hours last night. Is there any indication, because of his health, he may go a shorter concert tonight? David, uh, I'm barely hearing you because of an audio breakup problem we're having, but the show, I think, as you indicated, was about two, two hours and 15 minutes long last night. It was nonstop, a solid performance, uh, a taxing demand on any performer, no less one who might be having throat pr uh, problems at this particular time, but there is no reason to suspect at this point in time it won't go that long tonight. All right, Andy Gasmeyer, thank you very much at the Civic Arena Live tonight.